Welcome to the Introduction to Sound and Light Techniques, Manual 1. If you would like to download this manual, just go to the description box. There will be a link there that will take you to my website, and you can download the manual there. Now, this is a theoretical approach towards healing DNA and activating potential DNA codes. This is done through the specific use of vibration and oscillation directed through conscious intention using sound and light. Now, I'll be using the electromagnetic spectrum that is visual light, color, frequency, waveform to determine musical pitch utilizing A440, A432, and A444 hertz. Primarily, I'm going to focus on A440 out of convenience sake. And all of this will make sense to you as I continue. Okay? I will also be referring to the creation model found within Chelantic Morphogenic Science. This I will use correlating dimensional tone, color, and frequency modulation with the intentional purpose of creating sympathetic harmonic resonance within higher dimensional bands, potentially gaining access of the regenerative primal life force currents. Note that dimensions are harmonic bands of consciousness. That is to say, they are expansive harmonic aspects of consciousness that allows for greater and greater imagination. Imagination equals intended forward motion unto expansion, which is oscillation. Imagination is vital. Narrowed, focused imagination creates. So, let us imagine greater. Activating dormant DNA through sound and light. So, the basic idea here is to stimulate the dormant DNA, also known as junk DNA, which is the potential DNA that had been genetically turned off in so to switch it back on through dimensional sympathetic resonance. The technique involves vibratory voice harmonization, visualization, and purposely directing life force currents, that is to say energy, with clear intention. Now, this process is going to be a bit different for each individual. Results will vary, okay? But generally speaking, this process requires at least 10 minutes before the body can begin to synchronize with the mind and then begin the potential process of transmutation or stimulation of dormant DNA unto activation. So we have imagination, vibration, visualization, synchronization. This is all done with the basic understanding that this universal construct can simply be understood as that of sound and light. It is also important to note that the universe, a universe, a harmonic universe, can be referred to as an octave. And it is this reason why I developed these techniques. It's the concept of octave that I was able to relate to the musical octave that helped me in the process to begin to develop and continue to develop these techniques. So the focus will be that of sound and light within this basic harmonic relative function of the universal octave and musical octave. So when we look at sound and light, we actually see many things. As an example, when we look at sound, we also see the connection of it being 
matter, magnetism, and vibration. And when we look at light, which is the equal opposite expression of sound, we see antimatter, electrical, and oscillation. Sound and light are many things. Another example of that would be when you think of light, you should also think of color. And when you think of color, you should also think of frequency. At this point, it would be important for me to let you know that you're going to need a tone generator in order to assist you with the practice of these techniques. Now, I did a video on this where I spent a good portion of the day researching electronic keyboards under $100, and I found one under $200 that would be completely suitable for this. And that may be a bit of an investment for some people. You don't need to be a piano player or anything like that. This is just to be used as a device in order to assist you in creating tones so that you can harmonize with it in order to create vibratory resonation or harmonization within the body. Okay, so I'll go ahead and post that here on YouTube and just make it available to subscribers. Uh, that's what I'm going to do with this video as well. So that's something you're going to need to look at and consider, okay, if you wish to proceed with these techniques and the training that's uh, necessary in order to get the most out of these techniques because these techniques do require training. Okay, so anyhow, that being said, I'll be using a electronic piano for demonstration within the process of uh, the training videos, okay? All this up to this point, including this video, is about the introduction, knowing what it's about and the basic overall process. Uh, the actual application of the techniques is that which is to follow, okay? So again, I'll be using electronic piano and uh, when I get into the other tunings, I'll be using the guitar because I can't change the tuning on the piano that I have. I have a couple intermediate pianos and one works and the other one kind of half works. <laughs> so that's how that'll work out. But that's something down the road in respect to these other tunings. They're not really essential because we're correlating the frequency bands in relationship to the notes of the electro electromagnetic spectrum. So I've already done that for 440, as well as I've done it for 432. However, we're going to focus on 440 because that is the most accessible tuning because mostly everything's tuned to that and that'll work just fine for this. Okay. So I'm going to show you the notes on the piano and how the frequencies relate to the dimensional tones, their color, their related particle unit structures within the relationship of our multi-dimensional anatomy. Okay. Okay, so we can see the relationship of the dimensional tones, their frequency colors, and density particle units in parallel to that of the musical notes, or representing the electromagnetic spectrum. Something to understand here is that when we're playing these notes in association with the electromagnetic spectrum in regard to the color that we see here, as you notice, G is red, A is orange, B is yellow, C is green, and so on and so forth. Those colors are occurring 40 octaves above the notes that you're playing or you, that you would be sounding, okay? So that's okay because we're talking about harmonic resonance or sympathetic harmonic resonance and conscious intention through vibration. This is the way things works, folks. So... All we're doing is putting forth our conscious intention very specifically within a very specific order, an intended order, through very specific vibration 
in relationship how it's going to connect to these higher or faster oscillating tones or higher dimensions as it would be. Okay, so let's take a look at this for a second. So G represents the root chakra. And chakra meaning sound, light, or one. Okay, the tone for that is chi. The dimensional band there is dimensional band one or consciousness band one. The particle unit is a proton. And as you can see, just go through this and you can just see the relationship with all this laid out. And again, at this point, I would encourage you to go to my website. The link is found in the description. Download the manual and get access to this so that you have it with you. Because you're going to be referring to this in the beginning especially. You're going to be referring to this while you're developing these techniques or in the process while you're, the training is taking place for these techniques. So the way to memorize this is actually the practice of doing it or most effectively is the practice of the techniques themselves is how you'll memorize this. Okay, so the goal is to vibrate in unison with these frequency bands through the use of one's voice, harmonizing, which I call vibratory harmonization, while visualizing and intentionally directing the energy specifically through our multidimensional anatomy. In the process, this is creating a natural, harmonic, sympathetic resonance with the faster oscillating consciousness bands, meaning the higher dimensional frequency bands which carry the primal life force currents. Okay, so at this point we're going to take a look at the basic issues for the need of these techniques. So why are there distortions here in Harmonic Universe 1 or Octave 1? In this case, harmonic distortion is created when there is harmonic fragmentation within the octave. In other words, when parts of the octave are altered, shut off, or not working, or technically missing. Here within dimensions 1, 2, and 3, we have altered harmonic content. This in part being the result of unnatural harmonic refraction within the planetary holographic template creating polarization slash fragmentation that's unnatural. Now this causes an energy arc or jump over frequency dimensional bands 3 and 2 from dimensional band 4. Typically what we would have going on is within our vertical column that energy flowing through from 4 to 3 to 2 to 1 within a clear path Therefore, clearing any congestion within your energy field or within your chakra system in this case. But that's not what's occurring. Because of the refraction or fragmentation that's occurring, it's creating this arc and it's jumping over dimension bands 3 and 2, which results in this stagnation buildup within our energy field, within our vertical column, specifically in relationship to dimensions three and two. And this is known as being shadow body. Shadow body is your uncleared consciousness energy due to the lack of regenerative current flow or circulation. One may think of this as an energy stagnation. And this, coupled with the genetic manipulation of the physical body, brings no surprise to the extent of mental and emotional distress in this world. We have a lot of mental and emotional illness here. And when we're looking at dimension bands 3 and 2, this is the mental body and the emotional body. These techniques are evolutionary. In other words, they can continue to develop 
The goal, again, behind these techniques is to help reverse this issue and potentially activate our dormant DNA coding in a gentle yet powerful co-creative manner. Okay, on further reflection, if one alters slash removes the original harmonic content of the octave, that is to say musical notes in this case of the universal composition, well, it skips, right? Arcs. Another way to look at this is like the needle on a vinyl record. If the vinyl record is scratched, it's going to skip, right? And that like of water flowing downhill. If there is an obstruction in the path of the water, it's going to go to the point of least resistance. So it's going to go around the obstruction to go to the point of least resistance. And this is what's occurring here with us. There is a skip and arc that is taking place and going right to the root chakra, not clearing dimension three and two, which is the mental body and the emotional body. So it's safe to say we need to clear our path. Okay, here's an interesting little tidbit about the universal octave and our musical scale. Now, if you subdivide the chromatic scale, which consists of 12 semitones, so you subdivide that by three, counting up four semitones, then another four semitones, and another four semitones, which is four plus four plus four, equaling 12, and then think of that subdivision in relationship to the universal octave, okay, representing dimensions one, two, and three, and then equally subdivide each semitone by three, and then you will get a total of 36 microtones. So 12 plus 12 plus 12 equals 36. And yes, there are 36 tone octaves that are used within certain music here in this world. And there is a certain genre within Turkish uh, music known as makem. I, th I believe that's how it's pronounced. I'm not quite sure. However, they use a 36-tone octave. Okay? Now, here's where it gets interesting. According to the Keolantic Science model, our DNA should have a total of 36 full chromosomes. 12 for strand 1, 12 for strand 2, and 12 for strand 3 for a total of 36 chromosomes. However, we have 23. So according to the freedom teachings, we are minus 13 chromosomes. So this is the fragmentation. This is the missing harmonic content of the octave. Now that's an interesting correlation to that of the universal octave and our musical skill don't you think? So let's take a further look at sound and light in the relationship to that of DNA. So each DNA strand actually has 12, not four, nucleotide base chemicals. A fully active 12-strand DNA template has 144 chromosomes, 12 chromosomes for each DNA strand, 12 magnetic base codes, 12 electrical acceleration codes, and 12 chelons or fire letters. So let's take a look at the magnetic base codes. What is that? That is the particum also known as the ERA, also known as being magnetic, right? Also known as being vibration or pre-sound. And then electrical acceleration codes. What is that? That's the part of K, also known as the MANE, also known as electrical, okay? 
also known as oscillation or pre-light. So when you think of the electromagnetic spectrum, you should be thinking of the particum and the particle. Okay. Now 12 kilons or fire letters. So what is a fire letter? It's a combination of the IRA and the MANE. Magnetic base code and electrical base code. And when you put it together, what does it look like? Well, it looks like a three-dimensional Merkaba because that's what it is. Fire letters are made up of particum and particle, this being magnetic and electrical polarizations that form kilons. So one dimension equals one chakra, which equals one DNA strand, which equals one fire code. So in order to understand this model is to understand everything relates back to what is called the particle. So what is particle phasing and what is scalar standing wave flashing? So, particle phasing. Particle phasing is the internal expansion fission flashing on and contraction fusion flashing off of scalar standing wave points made up of particle units. Particle phasing governs the mechanics of matter manifestation within the dimensionalized frequency bands of the time matrix. Through particle phasing, harmonics of manifestation and varying levels of matter density are created. So basically the particle is to be seen as a complete integrated source consciousness electrotonal unit of consciousness, which is a morphogenic field that holds within it the encryption or program for this multidimensional construct. So that's what it means by a complete integrated source consciousness. Okay, so looking at this, we can see that the particum we can see that it's magnetic, right? It's matter, it's magnetic, it's pre-sound or vibration, known as the ERE, known as feminine energy, or the polarization, which is the equal opposite polarization of that of the particle. Okay, so the particle, antimatter, electrical oscillation or pre-light, pre-light oscillation, Mane, the masculine, equal opposite expression in regard to polarization. It's, this is an omnipolarity construct, okay? Trinity. Looking at the particle, we can see three fundamental aspects to it, right? That has many functions. So, the particum... We can see that magnetic base code symbol and the particle, we can see that electrical acceleration code symbol. And when we put those two together, what do we get? We get a three-dimensional Merkaba. So let's go back to the beginning and look at the electromagnetic spectrum just so we can connect the two. We have electro... Magnetic. So what is the electro? It's the particle, right? What's the magnetic? It's the particle. Electromagnetic spectrum. Sound and light are one. Everything relates back to the particle. Within this two-dimensional representation of the particle, particle, and particle, we can see the Merkaba. Right? Sound, 
light bodily movement, Merkaba. Okay? So, when looking at DNA, according to this model, we can see the Merkaba. In this case, a three-dimensional Merkaba, because we're in Harmonic Universe 1, so that's what we're dealing with. So, what is the relationship and function of the Merkaba? Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so Merkaba fields are that which carries energy and consciousness. They are engines by which universal life force currents and consciousness are circulated between the internal cathar grid, scalar template, and tron Meijin field radial body veil as they pass into and out of external manifestation. So the radial body or trine major field receives via the Merkaba field circulation the template or design for its particle manifestation from the instructions held within the original blueprint current and DNA template of the Kathara grid. Now, the Merkaba also receives its instructions for energy circulation from the Cathar grid and DNA template. Okay, so in the center of the Merkaba is what is called the crystal seed atom or seed crystal seal. And it, it is that which allows for the Merkaba to spin. Okay, it's going to get really heady here for a second. In other words, it's going to get kind of lofty so as well as poetic all right so here we go the perpetual polarization electromagnetic expression and depolarization of the life force currents within the merkaba fields form a constant electromagnetic domain okay we got that and are the process now this is the process by which the holographic projection is perpetually brought into and taken out of the perpetual experiential being. There's the flowery poetic part of that statement. But, you know, we're in a hologram. <laughs> there is a function to this design. It works a certain way. And as we will see... Because we need to cover these things that's behind the scenes to have a better understanding. If you don't get what's being communicated here, that's fine. That's not going to affect your ability to do these techniques at all, okay? But as you do these techniques, you'll start to see the relationship of this one to another that much more. And then your understanding will grow. And when your understanding grows you'll be able to incorporate that within your visualization within the techniques, which is going to enhance that experience, right? So, no worries is what I'm saying. Okay, so are you still with me? We still have some technicality to look at here as far as what's going on behind the scenes. And then uh, we'll conclude here in a little bit. So... You know, if you need to take a break, that's fine, I understand. So the natural Merkaba, there's a difference between, obviously, and we kind of laid the groundwork for that earlier within this uh, video, is that there is a natural order and then there is an unnatural order, and we have been affected by the unnatural order. So we're going to begin by looking at what is called the natural Merkaba, or the natural order function of the Merkaba, which is self perpetuating, eternal, and that of the unnatural Merkaba, okay? So, beginning with the natural Merkaba. The natural order Merkaba spin ratio of density 1, which we are in, we're in octave 1 or harmonic universe 1, so that spin ratio, according to the natural Merkaba, is 33 and one-third clockwise to that of 11 and two-thirds counterclockwise. So we're referring to the electromagnetic aspect, right? 
So that being the magnetic, which is the lower portion of the three-dimensional Merkaba, right, pointing down, and that which is pointing up is the electrical. So we're referring to that. So the, this, the natural Merkaba spin ratio creates a electromagnetic antiparticle particle balance of 33 and one-third parts base electrical antiparticles expanding energies in other words right expansion you know uh, oscillation to that of 11 and two-thirds parts base magnetic particles contracting energies right 33 and one-third electrical oscillations to that of 11 and two-thirds magnetic vibrations per Merkaba rotation within the natural density one matter base, right? In other words, harmonic universe one, right? Density one equals harmonic universe one or octave one, which consists of what? Three dimensions, right? So a dimension is not a density, right? It's a harmonic universe. Okay, in this, in this context, it's a harmonic universe. All right, so when we have more electrical thrust than magnetic draw, that means faster oscillating frequency, which means less dense and self-perpetuating. This reality field that we're in is really dense because there is way too much magnetic draw. The ratios are completely off within the Merkaba fields. It goes back to the manipulation of the creation mechanics here within Harmonic Universe 1. We're experiencing what is called a fallen condition. Right? It's very hard for current to flow here. It's like, you know, mud. It's really just dense and thick, and it's easily congested because of that. Okay, so more electrical thrust than magnetic draw, creating faster oscillating frequency. We have a less dense, and therefore it f the energy flows freer. When we have these uh, Merkaba fields naturally pulling in free flow of the frequency pattern blueprint that's found within consciousness band 12, it allows for this perpetual circulation of universal life force currents. So they're able to go you know, into non-manifest consciousness of source and other manifest expressions easily. So let's take a look at the unnatural Merkaba. The unnatural Merkaba is the antithesis of the natural Merkaba, right? Of course. Self-consuming, finite energy. It's an altered code. So, you know, it's 34 counterclockwise to that of 21 clockwise altered Merkaba spin ratio. So this creates a electromagnetic anti-particle slash particle balance of 34 parts base magnetic particles, that is, contracting energies, to that of 21 parts base electrical anti-particles expanding energy. So 34 magnetic vibrations to that of 21 electrical oscillations in contrast to that of 11 and two-thirds per uh, one Merkaba rotation within the natural Merkaba field, right? So what we have going on, obviously, is a more magnetic draw than electrical thrust, which creates lower frequency, right? So a more dense, self-consuming, finite matter base that functions for a limited time upon inorganic structures of externalized Merkaba fields 
that consume life force energy from other organic systems in order to self-sustain. So when we come into this system, which has a reversal spin phase lock with the Merkaba field, um, we become self-quarantined. It becomes, well, we enter a, a de-evolutionary cycle of degeneration because it's self-consuming. So because of that, obviously, we're not able to receive renewal of the primal life force currents from the original coded universal Merkaba circulatory system, right? Until finally, it self-consumes, you know, the remaining energies of a black hole implosion Everything just eventually just goes to dust. So in order to activate dormant, inactive DNA, we need to stimulate what is called the crystal seed atom or seed crystal seal so the Merkaba can spin in order to circulate the primal life force currents, right? And that's what sympathetic harmonic resonation is all about, and that's what these techniques are about. Okay, folks, we're almost done. So we're going to take a look at the crystal seals, what they are. So what is the crystal seal? The crystal seals are components of the level two Kithara grid and are groups of three-dimensional particai scalar wave composites that regulate the rate of particai phasing to create the base structures upon which dimensionalization is formed, the flow of frequency between dimensional bands or consciousness bands and harmonic universes, that is to say, the fixed expansion and contraction of fission-fusion rates of particai, which is vibration, oscillation rates, right? the angular rotation of particle spin, all this is regulated by the crystal seals. Okay, so there's two types of crystal seals. The star crystal seal and the seed crystal seal. All right, star crystal seals are positioned between the chakra centers along the central body current. And the seed crystal seals are positioned between them and serve as the point of composite frequency out of which the 15 primary chakra center vortices emerge. The seed crystal seals control the speed at which the fourth dimensional Merkaba fields will rotate and so direct the pulsation rhythm of particles within each dimension. Whereas the 15 seed crystal seals set the morphogenic field into the center of each dimension, the 15 star crystals are placed between dimensional bands and serve to regulate the functions of the seed crystal seals. The operation of the seed crystal seals is controlled by the star crystal seals can release the seed crystal seals, dimensional separation portions of the morphogenic field to merge with each other. There is an intimate relationship between the seed crystal seeds and the star crystal seed and the human DNA. Each seed crystal seal corresponds directly to and controls the basic functions of one strand of DNA. The process of assembling DNA strands by working with 
higher chakras is the process of bringing frequency from the stellar spirals into the star crystal seals. So in other words, this may also be achieved through sympathetic harmonic resonance. Okay, folks, that concludes the introduction to the sound and light techniques. Obviously, there was no techniques in this video, and it wasn't intended to be. This was an introduction, and this gives you background information, how they are to work. And I wanted to demonstrate through connecting the dots, so to speak, to let you know that they are effective and they do work, and this is how things are structured. So, that being said, the next video will be Sound and Light are One, Shakara, Sound and Light are One, Dimensional Band Clearing Exercises. So, the PDF for that will be available on my website when I release that video. At this point, I would like to emphasize these are not guided sessions. Just to clarify that again, this is going to be a training video. I'm just providing information and instruction and all the tools that I possibly make available to you so that you can practice these techniques because you have to do them. Nobody can guide you. Nobody can lead you. I'm just putting all this together because I feel a very strong need for people to be able to access this stuff for free. And you don't need to follow anybody other than yourself. And I'm just making these tools available. I'm manifesting this, putting it together. It's taken quite a long time for me to get to this point with this. So... When I post the video, the PDF for that will be available on the website. And until then, blessings, folks. Thank you, and uh, hope to see you soon.